My name is Evan Bright Jumper. I'm from Belgium and I'm speaker from the student side for today. And yes, I want to tell you my story, of course. I am here as standing witness to what I've written here today. No living being is an island. And what I've meant to say by that is that we live in systems. And by now I think we're pretty clear on what systems are. They're complicated systems, but they help us navigate to understand that we are all connected at some point. Where do I come from? I come from Northeast India, 4,823 miles away from Switzerland. And I've traveled a long way just to say that thing to you. <laughs> if you do not know where the Northeast of India is, it's exactly over there. Don't worry, even the Indians don't know this part exists. It's, it's way <laughs> far away from people's imaginations. It's an area filled with a rich cultural biodiversity. It has lots of mineral resources, uranium, gold, coal mines, and endless amount of potential for infrastructure and all sorts of import and export businesses. And my father and my mother are one of the only tribal people in that region who have created their own water and packaging business. And I, being zealous, wanted to beat them at the game. I was like, I'm going to do something even more important than you did. So this naive boy came with, a, with this plan. Because the region is landlocked, and if you see this area, it's a 23 mile wide region that connects this area to the rest of India. And funnily, that's the same 23 mile distance that disconnects India from the Bay of Bengal. And if this was open, we would have access to Singapore, to Malaysia, to Australia, to Shanghai, and endless amount of opportunities. And I came up with this brilliant plan. I'm going to cut up a river, dig up an inland river, and dig up all the land, and take a river inside, and create something like this. Like an inland port that exists in Germany. And voila, I would be rich. Does this land make lots of money, make the region rich, and you know, the whole success story. But this is what design management does to you. <laughs> this is Hockey Fascar, our professor, Nam's partner, a beloved professor of ours. You ask me this very important question ever. Are you looking at the whole view? And he took me to his good friend Ezio Manzini, and I recommend these two books to anyone from any walk of life because. These two books, Politics of the Everyday and Design When Everybody Designs, taught me this thing, that a better kind of society is only possible, and I say only because this is the new way, by bringing autonomy and collaboration. Because we've long gone from those linear models of a leader passing down a vision for the people. Nobody likes to hear about a structure that exists where orders are coming from top down, and we live in an information age where you have equal rights as anybody else does. So in this system, we must collaborate, or there's no other way to progress. From that point onwards, I ended up in Berlin. This summer, I was doing my internship as a design and data activist. Long way from design management, but not at all, because in the end, I was helping out climate activists, like the Hunger Strikers, Extinction Rebellion, Chaos Computer Club, in designing data models, in designing how to recruit new members, how to let people feel what the climate activists are feeling and why, why they are doing what they're doing. And from all of this, I learned this again, that a movement is only as strong as its community is. So in the end, again, it comes down to the community, to the interaction, to the collaborative nature of life. And from that point onwards, when I came back to the studies for the final third year, we were introduced to Andre Nogueira. He is a professor from Harvard, Harvard Public School of Health, and he introduced us this mother of all maps. <laughs> every map that you, every point that you see inside here is a large map fit, fitted within a bigger diversity of systems. And what it does, which I'll explain in a minute through two projects, is exactly this. This is the first project he gave us how your cup of coffee is clear in the jungle. So this was the problem, that in Indonesia, illegal farmers were farming plots of land that were not supposed to be farmed to plant coffee that you and I drink, the robusta grain of coffee. And the situation was very simple. Yeah, punish those illegal farmers, take all this stuff out from there, and yeah, problem solved. But again, 
When you're applying models like the whole view model, this is what you realize. There are way more stakeholders that you can ever imagine. And it went on to become so big that we could trace it all the way back to pre-colonial pre period of England through Adam Smith. That's how big the problem of coffee is. And this allowed us, but all of that complexity allows you to design better solutions, more human solutions, and looking at the whole problem, not just a patch of it for a client. We're designing systems that are much bigger than life itself. Secondly, the second project that we got with this project was of Bell Africa. I'll take this off. This is really bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bell Africa is an NGO based in Bern. What they do is they take secondhand bicycles and they take them to school girls in Africa and give it to them for a fair price. So, they came up to us with this challenge to find, they told us, you have to find three sponsors for us so that we can take the second-hand bicycles and transport them at a cheaper cost for a back-to-school program. And the question is very simple, and a normal de design agency would simply reply with, okay, all right, you give us this task, we'll find you the sponsors, we'll find whatever we need to, but this is what it did, we mapped it again. And once you map it, you realize, again, like, okay, the client is asking me a specific need, but is that what he really needs? And in the end, what is this project for in the end? And if you look in the center of the map, this word really stood out that it's all about fostering mobility for school girls in Tanzania. It's about education and it's about helping girls get that bicycle so that they can cycle to school every day so that they are one step closer to their education. Such a noble act that sounds very far away when somebody just comes and tells you, you have to find the sponsors and you're going to take second hand bikes and that this is your task. But when you realize the nobility of the project, then you can find much more complex points of interventions. And to this, we came up with something like this, Karandas Geneva plus Well Africa. Because again, we realize it's about education. Karandash is into lots of marketing efforts into talking about education. And we approached Well Africa. They were super happy with the proposition and then we wrote an email to Karan Dash and contacted the, the CSR responsibility head and he did reply back saying it's a very interesting proposition and they would like to hear more and none of this would have been possible if a map didn't exist like this. So yes, all of this, what happens is that this is with the beauty of DMI that a book from Ezio Manzini from a professor in Italy a book I picked up in Berlin from a girl written from a girl that wrote this book in China to a model in Harvard combined together changed my view of my hometown where I used to look at it like it's all about gold, it's, there's a lot of material, there's a shipping industry, there's a lot of uranium and mine, I can make lots of money out of this area to understanding that hey, it comes at a big price that there's a we are not alone in this. There are ethnic tribes over there. I come from one of them. And there are lots of precious animals and various types of cultural heritage that are just destroying the digging of the river for profitable reasons. So next time I go back, I will have not I will not think about cutting up rivers, but rather than creating connections and thinking about better solutions that involve people and the diversity we live in. Thank you so much.